In the second part of the lecture on multi-temporal UAS data, we will discuss time series analysis. Let's start with basic uh, time series analysis, which is relatively simple, but at the same time quite powerful. Uh, this, uh, this kind of analysis is applied per cell, and that means that for each cell uh, in each raster file, over the entire time series, we can compute mean and uh, we can compute different kinds of statistics. For example, we can compute the mean value for each grid cell or standard deviation. We can also extract the minimum value measured or the maximum value measured at each grid cell in the entire time series. And there is a little bit more detail and many examples from time series of LiDAR data uh, presented in this paper that is linked in the, uh, in the lecture slides. Uh, the first uh, pretty important and very useful concept uh, of, the, uh, of this kind of per cell uh, time series analysis is the core and envelope. The core we uh, call core surface, a surface that we get after extracting the minimum elevation measured for each grid cell. Uh, this core surface is a surface below which elevation has never decreased. Then we have another surface uh, that includes the maximum elevation ever measured in our time series. And this, uh, we call it envelope and uh, the, the space between the core and envelope is essentially a dynamic layer within which our landscape or our phenomenon has evolved. So it will be this dynamic space, would be these yellow areas in our, uh, in our cross sections where the green area or green surface is the envelope and the gray surface is the core surface. What we can do then, we can use the, the core and envelope to extract additional useful information from our time series in a very efficient way. For example, if we derive core surface from our uh, UAS time series, uh, we can then uh, find out, look at the core surface and uh, check whether it represents bare earth. And if it represents bare earth, we can compute difference between the UAS core and LiDAR bare earth. Uh, and if the difference is, the, uh, if there are large differences, that means that somewhere in our data set, we have a highly distorted digital surface model. And you can see like if you have just five or 10 digital surface models, it's relatively easy to check them one by one. But if you have hundred of them, then this is a really useful tool that would allow you to identify that, that there is something wrong uh, in your time series and you need to do further analysis. And there is one tool that allows you to quickly uh, identify which data set uh, or which survey is actually distorted or is causing these unrealistic differences. And in our case, it's really like 5, 15 meters below the surface of LiDAR in these, uh, in these red areas. Um, by computing the time of minimum raster, so what this, which is represented here, and what this time of minimum raster means that in the each grid cell, we have the number of the raster in the time series when the minimum value was measured. So for example, in this area, the minimum value was measured at the time of the second raster. So we can extract, look at which one is the second raster and which one has the, uh, has the largest error. And you will be doing this 
in your assignment so you will get some hands-on experience about how to identify whether there are any uh, DEMs or DSMs with large distortions in your data set and how to identify uh, which one it is using the time of minimum. If we are talking about the uh, rasters that are below the LiDAR uh, background, which of course indicates error. Now, if we remove those, uh, those files that are below the LiDAR uh, background from the, uh, from the time series, then we can again, co we can compute a new core surface, new minimum, and then the difference between UAS core and LiDAR background is now very close to zero, and it's here. And you can see that the only uh, larger difference is actually the building and some area, uh, forested area or area with shrubs, uh, where the minimum value of UAS is actually on the top of the shrubs and we don't have any background data in that location. What is quite interesting that when you take this, uh, take this, this result, these differences, which are pretty close to zero within a couple centimeters, and you change the color table to a color table that is histogram equalized, you get this pattern of differences. <coughs> and you can now think about what are we actually seeing here. And here the distortion or the difference or the artifact, which is this edge, is not in the UAS data, but, uh, uh, but it is in the LiDAR data and it is edge of the swath. So it allows you uh, now by eliminating the distortions from UAS data time series, um, identify any issues that you have actually in the LiDAR background data. Now you can you you can ask different questions when you have the uh, the core and envelope uh, surfaces. For example, with the envelope, which is the maximum elevation measured in your time series, you can ask what is the maximum height of crop in each pixel in your or in each raster grid cell over the time and you can identify the areas that consistently grow higher uh, a crop or that consistently have uh, lower uh, lower crop or or where where we just can't get anything grow properly and then you can compute time of maximum that means when was the crop highest at each grid cell whether there is some temporal variability uh, or whether it all happens uh, during the same, uh, same survey. You can also then derive what is the largest range and variability of crop height using these tools. And here is just an example of the, of the envelope. Uh, and uh, we can see that throughout this area, we really have the, the highest, uh, highest crop uh, captured in these two fields and in this field. And uh, uh, in these fields, we didn't have the crop higher than about 30 centimeters throughout our survey. So we didn't really capture, if there was anything growing, we didn't really capture it with our survey. And when you display this surface, the envelope surface, you can see it looks like in 3D, it looks like this. So, so you can clearly see the differences in the height in the vegetation. You can also use the envelope to monitor certain smaller features. Uh, as you know, uh, along our uh, building, we usually have parked cars. And when you look at these parked cars, there was never this many cars parked, but the envelope essentially accumulates all the cars that were ever parked there during our survey. 
so you can identify the extent of the uh, area where people usually park when they come there and you can use this the results of this monitoring uh, to actually manage your parking area if you find that certain times people park in the area where they, they shouldn't be parking or that you need to design an additional space so this is uh, this is also a very nice uh, application by using a very simple tool uh, you can identify uh, all the cars that were ever there and the, the if you have a really good very well designed time series monitoring you can do even more sophisticated statistics for example you can uh, you can um, extract a subset of your uh, of your monitoring uh, during the time period when your changes are close to linear for example a systematic crop growth period and then you can compute per cell linear regression uh, and that way you can compute the rate of growth during the growing period of your um, of your uh, or in your uh, area or in your field another tool that can be applied within the temporal framework is map algebra for time series so this allows uh, us to use just one expression and apply it to all maps within our time series and then because this is just a script that is running map algebra the output now will be new time series so in our previous analysis we applied the analysis where the output of the analysis was a single summary raster like core and an uh, envelope or the slope of regression line now the output will be a new time series which was modified by the, uh, by the map algebra expression. So for example, we can extract from each grid cell, we can extract the above ground vegetation between two, uh, uh, two <coughs> within a certain interval. Uh, and in my example, we have extracted the uh, uh, all features that are above ground between 0.3 meter and 2 meters and this is again like with one expression we apply it to all rasters and we will get a new raster time series that just shows essentially crop uh, and you can see we have one uh, one raster output uh, uh, where the crop is very well defined and where it is at its highest, you can comp uh, compare this with the envelope map to see whether you whether this is really the, the maximum height that we have seen. But then you have also a map uh, where it is obvious that this is not a crop, but it is a distortion. And you can compare it whether this is actually that file that was giving you where you have seen the distortion when uh, comparing the core with the bare ground LiDAR data. And you will see indeed that's that, uh, uh, that's that file that had this large distortion on this side. And then we have another time where we don't have any uh, any vegetation here it was in fall when the crop was already harvested and we have a little bit of grass or new crop growing here so again uh, a great tool for uh, for a com combination of map algebra over the entire time series allow us to analyze the surveys uh, for the crop growth we can then estimate the crop volume and the crop volume is relatively uh, uh, easy to compute using the raster, uh, raster tools when you are actually computing the difference between the bare ground uh, or core surface and the, and the uh, extracted uh, uh, relative elevation above, above the bare ground. 
using a uh, using essentially a summary uh, summary function, and you will see that in in your assignment. Uh, you can also extract a smaller feature such as this building. Uh, so you will see in the, uh, in the assignment how you use very simple type of analysis to extract the building and compute its volume. Using simple tools such as map algebra, differencing and the, uh, and the uh, summary of elevations over uh, uh, multiplied by the area of grid cell. And then the last type of analysis that we will be doing is uh, view sheets. As you can imagine, the view sheets change based on the growth of elevation. So for example, if you want to, to uh, design a site uh, from which you want to monitor your area, you need to first analyze your view sheets uh, based on the over time, as it changes over time uh, due to the growth of vegetation. And in this particular example, you can see the different color shows the uh, different spatial extent uh, extracted from these different times uh, when it was uh, monitored uh, by UAS. And then we can use this. Uh, we can use this type of analysis to support sighting of a monitoring webcam, and you will have a very nice example of this uh, an entire workflow of how to do this kind of analysis in your assignment. And finally, when we have the time series, one way how to look at all of your data using the uh, uh, all of your data uh, is using the animation tool because you can browse the data set but you can also animate your data set. Uh, so you can try it with the data set that is provided in the uh, in your data set in the assignments. You have already done the uh, done the water flow simulation so you know how to use the tool. Uh, there is a little bit more uh, details about how to do it within GRASS uh, temporal framework. So I encourage you to click on the uh, GRASS temporal workshop, scroll down and you will find an example about how to do it uh, with the temporal framework um, data set. And then there are, for those of you who uh, haven't taken MEA 582, there are some uh, older examples of uh, dynamic visualization uh, that you can uh, use as an ins inspiration for your own work. So what did we talk about in this, uh, in this lecture? We discussed the UAS 3D monitoring, what are the basic considerations that you need to take uh, into account. Uh, we have uh, discuss the temporal framework and how do we deal with, uh, with temporal data and what are the kinds of uh, analysis that we can do, uh, uh, including per cell analysis and applying, the, and applying the map algebra and other types of analysis on, uh, 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 using, the, using the, the data registered within the temporal framework. And I have also discussed a little bit the, the, the things or the kind of analysis that you will be doing in your assignments, such as estimation of volumes and analyzing changing view sheets.